Sure, I'm Michael Crandell. I'm CEO of RightScale. And at RightScale, we manage clouds. We're a web-based cloud management platform uh, focused on popular public clouds, including Amazon, GoGrid, Flexiscale, etc., and others that are emerging, like Rackspace and SignCloud, uh, as well as private clouds. A month ago, we announced support for that. And what do we mean by management? Well, we, we provide a web-based interface on top of which is a whole layer of automation. So we're automating the launching of servers um, in relation to scale, scaling events, load and uh, failures and things like that. We also provide portability of solutions from one cloud to the next, which gives customers freedom of choice for which infrastructure they want to use. And then finally, we provide cloud-ready solutions, by which I mean a framework for running batch processes or a database solution built around MySQL uh, or a scalable web website front end. And an increasing collection of those provided both by us and by um, independent software vendor partners. So tell me a little bit about your, your, your customers. I gather some uh, might be folks who are looking for a sort of user-friendly interface to the, to the cloud, but it, but it sounds like there's much more than that at this point. Sure. Uh, our customers range from startups, small businesses, all the way up to enterprise customers. So some of our enterprise customers are uh, Eli Lilly, ESPN, Virgin Atlantic, Mars Candy Company. Uh, and the usage really falls, is almost as broad as there are a number of customers. But there are some common use cases of, of um, let's say, easy, low-hanging fruit for moving applications. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is public-facing websites. Um, these are, are sites that are usually not as security sensitive or as regulatory sensitive as maybe financial data. Uh, and they, they are subject to variations in load because of flash crowds, things like that. So that's one use, again, whether it's a startup or a, a large company. Facebook plugins is another category. Big batch processing requirements might be um, health insurance claim form analysis in the tens of millions at a time. Might be protein analysis for a biopharma. Um, might be transcoding videos. So we have that whole range of applications. And uh, then we also do get a lot of test and development behind those. So corporations that want to be able to easily spin up compute and storage resources for doing part of their normal life cycle of test and dev, and they get the agility of resources on demand. Now you're in kind of an interesting place in the cloud ecosystem in that you're working with, with multiple platforms. Um, uh, obviously, they're kind of uh, uh, each of which is developing at its own pace. What, what are the, the challenges for, for right scale in uh, in, in sorting out how to, to, to best work with the, the different platforms and, uh, and, and sort, sort of things out as, as uh, the cloud matures here? Sure. So, you know, we work with clouds that are at an, at an AP, exposed at an API level. So when people talk about cloud computing, they really mean several things. One of them is the pay-as-you-go model. Another one is on-demand resources, which really means programmatically accessible which means that through a programmatic call or an API call, you can launch a server, allocate disk space, things like this. And the challenge is, is not only that the APIs to talk to different clouds differ, uh, but that's not the biggest part. That's part of it in, in talking to all the clouds. The other is that the low-level resource behavior varies from cloud to cloud. So how do IP addresses work on cloud A versus cloud B? How does a, does a server have local storage that persists or doesn't on different clouds? And that's really what RightScale builds its layer of abstraction on top of so that you don't have to. Right. There's a lot of discussion of interoperability, which you, which you mentioned before. Um, where do where did things stand there? Are you able to, to um, um, move uh, customers back and forth between uh, different kinds of clouds? What are the, 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 the challenges there? and, and uh, uh, and what lies ahead for cloud interoperability. Right, so th that's an evolving picture, Rich. Um, uh, really, it boils down to 
you know, and we would distinguish, I guess, between interoperability from portability. Mm -hmm. So almost all environments can interoperate now in the sense of, uh, you know, if you wanted to, you could have a web server talking to a database server in a different cloud because the standards for this are, are things like web services APIs that are long standing. Portability means if I build my system on cloud A, can I, how much work does it take to move it over and run it on cloud B? And that kind of gets to the issue of standards. And our approach has been a very practical one because there are lots of discussions going on now about standards and standardization. And we take a practical approach, which is whatever happens with regard to these standards movements, which we both know could take years uh, to, to bear fruit, We'll follow them, we support them, but in the meantime, we're building this layer of abstraction to still deliver the portability, or at least minimize the amount of work that's required in order to give customers freedom of choice um, and really freedom to pick the best solution. Um, and clouds, you know, all clouds are not created equal. Uh, they have different characteristics. They differentiate on different factors, be it pricing or geographical location or regulatory compliance or actual functionality and features around the, the resources that they provide. All of those are differentiators. Um, and so it's really something that's important for customers to avoid lock-in and retain freedom of choice. Uh, obviously, the, the, it's interesting from last year's structure conference here to, to this year's, there's been you know, uh, a lot of growth in the in the industry, and and uh, I guess I'm, I'm curious in, in terms of where you, what you have the, the the sort of questions and issues are changing for the folks who, who haven't yet made a decision about the the cloud. What do you, what are you you're hearing? What are the the uh, uh, the key questions and decision points for uh, companies, and particularly in the enterprise sector, who are looking at the cloud and not not uh, sure exactly which way to go? Sure, um, <clears throat> it's a good question. What we found is that year over year, this was beginning of 08 to 09, we saw a nearly 1,000% increase in usage, in cloud usage that we monitor and that's driven on our platform. We have nearly 15,000 users of our free edition and many hundreds of paying customers. So usage is going way up. There are a lot of companies using the cloud today. The other thing that's increased is the breadth of discussion and consideration of the cloud. And as the, um, I guess, the population of companies looking at cloud has increased, uh, a number of questions have come up, particularly at the enterprise level. So there's definitely a lot of concern around security, around trust, around compliance, uh, both with internal and external um, regulatory requirements. And so those are all key questions. Frankly, they're not fully resolved and answered yet. I know the major players in the cloud space, including RightScale, are feverishly working away on those and we'll see, I would, I would guess, in the remainder of 09 announcements about um, security compliance, regulatory compliance from infrastructure clouds uh, as, as well as from providers like us. For example, we've built a HIPAA compliance solution for a customer. Um, but at the same time as, as all these valid concerns are, are occurring, the equally important question that I think we're hearing from some more forward-looking enterprises is what can we do to get going now? How do we launch some sort of project today? How do you help us get our feet wet in the cloud? And what's why that's a powerful question is that you're not talking about big capital expenditures. You're not talking about big long-term commitments. You're really only talking about taking a portion of some of your staff's time to take a project that is appropriate for the cloud, that's not the crown jewels of the company information, but something that is appropriate, a workload or a project, and learn about it. It's really the best way to learn. And so we see a lot of companies doing that and a lot of interest in that. And we encourage it. Well, listen, thanks a lot for, for taking some time to, to talk to us about rights. Thank you, Rich. Thank you.